Hey, dude, what you doing on Saturday? I don't know. Nothing, I guess. Cool, because Josh's parents are out of town, and he's throwing this sick party with college girls, man. College girls. It's going to be awesome. You're going, right? The Holy Spirit, invisible to the unbelieving world. No, man. Thanks anyways. Convicting the world of sin and righteousness. You guys think that's dirty? Listen to this one. An old prospector walks into a bar. I gotta go. The Spirit reminds us of all of Jesus' teachings. I just don't get this verse. Oh. Jesus said of the Spirit, He will testify about me. Because the Bible says, I'm the vine and you are the... the... Oh man, what is it? The branches. Oh, okay. A faithful guide, steering us through difficult decisions. The Spirit walks with us through good times and bad. So, you're a Christian? Uh, yeah. But that's only because you grew up in a Christian home. Actually, it's because I've seen firsthand what he's done in my life. Not only that, but the Bible has more evidence to support it than any other ancient document. I didn't know that. Me either. The Hebrew word used to describe the Holy Spirit meant one who comes alongside. Mr. John. Encouraging us and providing us with wise counsel, the Holy Spirit walking with you day by day. I, I never knew what the Holy Spirit looked like till now. Can we do a dollar blessing? I'd appreciate that a very a great deal. Some of you guys hop up and help out. If, you, if you're visiting with us, we do that every once in a while to help someone. And today we're going to bless our families that uh, went to uh, are going to the national uh, junior Bible quiz uh, uh, tournament. And it's a, a four day tournament, and it's out of town, and they they have a a quiz hotel and all that. So we just thought maybe you'd like to help, just give a dollar and. We'll bless them, and they've been working hard raising their money, so this is going to get them over the top, and I appreciate your help. Starting today with a series on the Holy Spirit, if you'll take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 1, <clears throat> we'll read there in a minute, Acts chapter 1. Uh, I, do, look, I do have a little bit of news uh, to share with you. Uh, some of you know Pastor Mandy, our early childhood pastor, and her, her, her husband, Jeremy, has been in the ministry uh, over the past many years and uh, had recently uh, been, uh, he's a terrific carpenter, had been working there, and she was also has a call, and she was serving in our early childhood, and she will be leaving us the, about the middle of August or so because pa Pastor Jeremy uh, got offered with a friend of his who pastors down in San Antonio. They're going to become Texans, and he's taken that position so our blessings go with them while we have mixed emotions. In case you're wondering, there's not one thing that they don't like about us and not one thing we don't like about them. And so it's a, it's a bittersweet deal. We're going to really, really miss Pastor Mandy and Jeremy and their family. They're precious people. So keep us in your prayers as we uh, find the, the right uh, person to fill those shoes. It's a very important thing. We love little ones. They're just precious as can be. And so many of you serve in that capacity uh, to help in those ministries. And, and I'll tell you, when you have grandchildren that age or children that age, boy, you sure do appreciate it. We, we thank you so much for, for what you do there. And uh, we do need a quorum tonight. And while I understand it's just a short meeting, if you can't stay for the service, if you're a member, if you could just come for that 15 minutes, even if you got something you got to do, if you're a member, Please uh, take that responsibility serious. Try to get here, and, uh, and we'll be quarter of uh, six, and by six, uh, we should be done. It's just a, 
a inf little information about the house. The way that works is pastor, the pastors, we bought parsonages and they, out of their salary, pay for them in a contract with the church to begin to buy equity in that house. I want you to know something that, um, it, that uh, my heart has been yearning and, and uh, desiring to see God do something amazing and, and through prayers. It, it's just amazing how God puts people in your life. So a couple of weeks ago, I was having uh, breakfast with a gentleman that began to share some things that, that God had been speaking to me and, and in a way that really jumped out at me. And then this past Saturday, totally disconnected, they don't even know each other, a different gentleman began to talk to me. And it, it's amazing because he wasn't here and I preached on the Holy Spirit and the work through Smith Wigglesworth last Sunday night. You might want to go online and listen to that. And... Uh, uh, and he wasn't able to be here because they were out of town. And he had not watched it. And it was amazing that he began to say back to me and sharing over breakfast, not having any knowledge, ex much of exactly what I had started saying and what this other gentleman had said. I believe that God is saying to us that there is a power, the power of God that is so great that we can tap into to be the people of God as shining lights, like Peter said, called out of darkness into his light, a holy people, a, a chosen nation, uh, and, and uh, that we not walk weak and in darkness, but in strength and in victory. And in the close of the service, I'm gonna ask you, if you're not sure that if you were to die today that you would wake up in heaven, that you come to this altar and say, Jesus, you know, I need your spirit to quicken to me because I'll be reading a verse that says the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that, that you're a child of God and there should be no second guessing. You should be in the arms of the Father. You should know that closeness and be confident in your relationship with God. But when we struggle and we're weak, sometimes we realize there's more that we can reach for, more that we can get to, more that we can have. And, and then... Um, um, I, I want to also say that if you're here and you realize through this message that it's not that you don't love God, it's not that you don't want more of God, but that you need to take some action, to take steps, to say, I want all of God with his glory and his power and his manifestations. I want to be used of God mightily by his spirit. I want to be an overcomer. I want to be victorious. And, and I mean, are you just, you're going, hey, I'm doing good, but I, if there's more to be had, I want it. And let me tell you, the more you pursue God, the more God you're gonna get. Sometimes we just, we just miss the fact that he's right there and he's inviting us. He's saying, come. So I'm inviting you right now at the close of this service to get out of your seat and fill this altar saying, here we are, we're seeking after you, we're crying out to you, Holy Spirit of God, fill us. There's an old song that uh, oh, Linda, I think, went away for me. Linda, come up here, and I'll, I'll say something else while you come up here. I wanted to sing a song for you. Pastor Brett, he's a smart man. He doesn't let me sing solos. But every now and then, I go behind his back, Actually, he pulled this whole song for me. This song is older than me, and uh, it's uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is. And uh, I think the words are, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is love. There is comfort in life's darkest hour. There is light and life. There is help, and there's power in the Spirit, in the Spirit of the Lord. For those of you that don't know, Jesus is not here on earth. He's at the right hand of God, the Father of God's on his throne, and he sent his Holy Spirit. And we can be ever as near as we're sensitive and welcoming of his Holy Spirit. Will you welcome the Spirit as, we, as I sing this? If you know it, sing it with me. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. Where the Spirit of the Lord is there is love there is love there is comfort in life's darkest hour there is light and life there is help and power 
in the spirit, in the spirit of the Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, invite him as I sing it, sing with me. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is love, and there is comfort in life's darkest hour there is light and life there is help and power in the spirit thank you lord in the spirit oh god of the lord so come by your holy spirit i pray come with your might and power and visit us each one in the name of jesus we welcome you holy spirit and everyone said amen Oh, I love that song. I don't know if, how many of you remember that old song, huh? How many of you go, that's a brand new song. It was just written yesterday and Chris Tomlin wrote that. Raise your hand. You wouldn't know any different. Don't toy with me. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. You know that? There's life, there's power, there's healing, there's victory in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus, amen? To wash away our sin. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't ever get good enough in your own self and no man can wash you clean. Only the blood, the life-giving blood of Jesus where he died on the cross for us. And then there's power in God's word. So I, I, I would be amiss not to say that the sword, the weapon of God's spirit is the word of God. You cannot separate the spirit. And I'm gonna be beginning, I don't know how loud I am here, but I'm gonna probably get a little louder in my voice. But you can't separate the spirit of God from the word of God, nor the word from the spirit, because the word is theology that's lifeless without the spirit, and the spirit is shallow and not powerful without the word. They work together and they are one and the same. We must be students and people of the word. The Old Testament, the psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. They knew then the power of truth to plant it deep within you and memorize it, put it in your spirit, in your mind to control you that you have, be able to, to walk close to God and be, be holy before God. The Old Testament says, be holy. And the, uh, even as I am holy, and Peter quotes that. He says, he says, uh, it is written, be holy even as I am holy, and it's true. And you know, the first name of the Spirit is holy because he works holiness in us. He works it. He's the power of God. Bill Gothard years ago was a man that taught some great truths, and, and uh, I'm not able to remember them all, so if you don't like something he said, don't you know, don't throw him under, don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, but this one is true, and you see it in Scripture, and it's, it's truth, is that what grace is. Grace changes your heart because it's a powerful word. It's a powerful enactment of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Hebrew writer says when you say it's okay to just live in sin because everybody sins, that you insult the spirit of grace and you tread on the blood of Jesus. Spirit of grace. And grace is God coming into your heart and giving you a new desire to walk with him, to know him, to love him, to please him. That's the work of grace. You can't change your own heart. The work of God changes your heart to seek after him, to desire him, to know him. And his grace is working in this room by his spirit today. And then it doesn't stop there. Grace not only gives you a new desire, but Gothard says, and I agree with him, and he gives you the power to do it. He doesn't leave you powerless. He doesn't say be holy. He doesn't say to, you know, to obey without giving you power. 
Now, some of you may be hearing me this morning and you may think, "Uh uh-oh, pastor's gonna preach a saved by the law or saved by works message, and I'm not at all. You're saved by grace, but grace is not what this world is preaching. This world is preaching grace like it's universal salvation. And here's the thing that bothers me more than anything. Well, I know that's wrong and I know I sin and I probably shouldn't, but whatever, but nobody's perfect, everybody sins. That is so not the spirit of God. That is so much the why I wanna do what I wanna do and I don't wanna bend and or bow my knee to the convicting voice of the spirit and to the commands of God's word. Jesus healed people and then he said, go and sin no more. He didn't say keep sinning. And I'm telling you something, salvation is stronger than the definition of salvation. It's the power of God, the gospel, the cross, the spirit of God. We're born again by the spirit. It's a rebirth. It's a happening that only God can do. And he does it in our hearts. And there, it's, it's, it's called transformation. It's powerful. The Holy Spirit does so many things in our lives and he's, he's powerful. In Acts, 1, uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, Jesus brings up the promise of God the Father there. And, and he mentions it when he tells them to wait there but right before he ascends into heaven. In verse four, he says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Jesus said, Jesus is commanding them, his followers not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the gift of my father, my father promised, which you've heard me speak about, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now remember, John says, I baptize with water, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unlatch, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In other words, Jesus is the baptizer of the Spirit, and the Spirit is the baptizer of Jesus. You understand that? I'll show you that in just a second. But in, in, cause the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, and I'm not gonna go there today, but the Holy Spirit didn't come to speak of himself, but he speaks that which he hears from the God and he is there to not glorify himself, but to glorify Jesus. And he does that. And that's why we need spirit-filled worship. Uh, so he goes on and he says, for, he says in verse, uh, yeah. So you, in a few days you'll be baptized Holy Spirit. Chapter two, now jump over to verse one. When the day of Pentecost was, uh, came, King James says, fully come. And Pentecost was the early harvest. I want to stop right there. Listen to me. Harvest means you, you bring in the crop. And in spiritual language, harvest is souls to come to Christ and have eternal life and, and be heaven bound. And I want to tell you something. There is absolutely nothing that the Spirit does that the, pur- the purpose of it is to bring people to Christ. Remember, he, he rebuked them because they were, they were signs followers. They, were going, they weren't going after Jesus, they were going after signs. The signs weren't just to do the signs. Listen, God can heal you all day long and you not be saved and not be a soul winner. You know, what, what is it? You're just gonna live another 10 years or 20 years on earth? So what? 30 years, whatever. This life is temporary, eternity's forever, right? So why in the world, you tell me, if, if the purpose in the end of everything the Holy Spirit does is not to elevate Jesus and to bring and convict, convict people and call people to Jesus Christ and bring people into a relationship and restore that with God the Father because he wants every person to be born again by the Holy Spirit of God. Are you with me? You get that? So I'm gonna tell you that every gift that happens operates for the benefit of the believer but also operates in a sign, in a witness, in a power that people might come to Christ. And so the fact that it happened the first time in a set significant way on the day of Pentecost, the day of early harvest, tells me that God's harvest is on his mind. And then Peter, being full of the Holy Spirit, preached and there were thousands that got saved. You remember that? So, I mean, it's about souls, folks, everything the Spirit does. The fruit is about souls. The gifts are about souls. It's about believers, too, but it's also about souls through us because the Holy Spirit has a work for you to do, and we need him. They were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like violent blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues, or languages, that word tongues, the antiquated word for languages, as the Spirit enabled them. The Spirit gave the words, enabled them. He provided the language. 
Now, I'm not talking about spiritual language today, but eventually I will, because I'll be doing a series here the next few weeks on the Holy Spirit. But I'm talking about power. You shall receive power. You see, this, God is powerful. We are weak. He is strong. He is powerful. And his power is not short ever. The problem is, is that we block him. We hold him back because of pride, because of fear, because of greed, because of selfishness, because of unforgiveness, because of, of lust, because of other things. We hold him back for whatever reason. But I'm gonna tell you right now, we come to this altar and we come before God and you can have a powerful moment with God where suddenly he reveals himself to you so real that Jesus Christ is exalted and elevated in your life and the Father becomes so real as if you could step up and sit on his lap and cry, Abba, Father, because that's the work of the Spirit to bring us in a relationship with God. This morning, the danger for you is to be focused on hearing what I talk about, about living, being holy, and hear and get sin, sin perspective or focused on sin and not doing sin. And you can look at what's sin in your life and you can focus on that and you can make up your mind and you can go, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. You're messing up. Don't get sin focused. Get Jesus focused. Get God focused. Because when you get more of God and you get more of his spirit, his spirit will bring life and it'll be light and it'll be victory. Jesus. So we got to go after God and realize the only answer is for us to get close to God. I mean, have you ever been closer to God than you are right now? You've slid back. Was there a time you were closer to God than you are now? If so, you've slid back. And this old world just keeps pulling at people, and it's easy for us to let ourselves start stepping in or just kind of riding the fence and walking along, and it just zaps us of, the, of God. And we get so focused on entertainment and sports and vacations and family and food and, and, and relaxation and, 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 you know, our families become our, our gods and, and everything. And let me just tell you something. There's nothing like the fullness and the power and the glory of the presence of God and the fullness of his holiness and his power to be in our midst among us because that's the spirit does come among us as we gather in his name. There he is, he said right? And as people begin to praise him, he inhabits the praise of his people. In other words, he shows up among us in a special way, but he's also inside you and it's powerful. And that's what the work of the spirit, when you think of the spirit, there's several words that come to my mind and throughout scripture. So you read the Bible and all of these words have been taken that says these are things that the Holy Spirit is active doing. Acceptance, ability, adoption, anointing, appointments, boldness, blessing, cleansing, character, comfort, commands, conviction, confidence, confirmation, counselor, conscience, deliverance, discernment, discipling, disciplining, deposit, empowering, encouraging, faith, fellowship, freedom, fruit, gifts, glory, goodness, grace, grieving, guidance, guarantee, healing, hope, helping, holiness, impartation, inspiration, inner witness, interpretation, joy, judgment, knowledge, life, liberty, love, miracles, new birth, obedience, oneness, peace, perseverance, power, prayer, prophecy, preaching, persuasion, quickening, release, revival, revelation, righteousness, sanctification by the sword of God, sealing, sonship, strength, teaching, truth, tongues, transformation, unity, utterances, understanding, vitality, victory, and wisdom, and zeal. I'm gonna tell you, the Holy Spirit is present. Jesus is at the right hand of God, the Father. God is on the throne and the Spirit is in you. He wants to work in you. He's been given to us. He's available to us if we will only reach out to him. The first thing I want you to see is the Holy Spirit has power to transform us. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, 
It says, but we all with, who with unveiled faces, in other words, pull down, just you, between you and God, contemplate the Lord's glory or being transformed. If you'll just pull that down and let God's come into you, he'll transform you into his image, be like him. With ever increasing glory, it's increasing, it's more, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit, God's Spirit. You're born again by the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and in verse 13, and this is uh, talking about unity and how we're differing in our gifts, but we're one. And it talks about that we're baptized by the same Spirit, one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether you're a Jew or Gentile, no matter what you're, you, you know, slave or free, let me throw in male, female, doesn't matter. And we're all given the one Spirit to drink. You see, God's Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. This is not Acts 2 baptism. This is salvation, transformation, Holy Spirit powered regeneration, uh, born again work of the Spirit that every person can have. You say, well, how in the world do those Baptists that don't even believe in, in, the, in a gifting of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how in the world do they live so strong and they win people to Christ? And I grew up in the South and I'd see them, boy, they were witnessing, they were word toting, they were word memorizing, they were word uh, uh, meditating and, and, and they had Jesus save them and the spirit was within them. There was more, there was more for them. Okay, don't get mad at me, something about this Waco people. In case you're watching online here and everything like that. But I'm just talking about the powerful work of being born again. It's the Holy Spirit, folks. It, 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 it messes you up. You can't enjoy sin again. He's all over you. He's calling you to Jesus. He's prompting you to get more of God. He's alive, making the word of God alive. He's giving you a passion for your calling. He's trying to get your attention. And then Matthew 121, you're talking about transformation. When the angel comes to Joseph, and says, hey, Mary, that baby, that's by the Holy Spirit. And he says, call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sin. He won't, he doesn't say he'll forgive them. He doesn't say he'll wash away. No, he will deliver them, save them from their sin. You think the old, the Israelites in Egypt, they were delivered out of bondage. God doesn't just save you and give you a little, little blood to wash away sin day by day and leave you uh, 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 weak and, and leave you where you're not a, a more overcomer. In the, in the letter to the churches, he talks about things he had against them. And, 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 he, and he talks about there, he says that he that overcomes, he that overcomes, I'll give life. He that overcomes, you see, God's power, his word, his spirit will help you be overcomers. We are, not, we are to be transformed by the Holy Spirit of God. He's at work here. And if you don't know Jesus for sure, you're not positive. This Holy Spirit will meet you right at this altar and Jesus will do something in your heart. I remember the day that I knelt down and I asked Jesus into my heart and I didn't understand this theology, but the Holy Spirit showed up and I wept and I wept for two days, almost three days I couldn't quit crying. I had more snot in this body than you. I, I, I probably thought I'd done died. I mean, everything in me, I'd eat a hamburger and turn to snot because I was still crying. It was just, a, that's just the way I acted because, because I just a lot to cleanse out of me. I don't know. I don't understand that, but I respond that way. Then the Holy Spirit number two empowers us to be victorious over the enemy. See, Satan's not afraid of you. That songwriter with uh, a mighty fortress is our God that talks about that we're no match to the enemy. Are you kidding me? But God is, and guess what? Where does God live by his spirit? In you, folks. And what does 1 John 4, 4 says? You are of God, little children, have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, and the Holy Spirit within us is far more powerful than Satan. So you can't do the Flip Wilson thing and go, the devil made me do it, baloney. You are to be overcomers, victorious, and, uh, and, and, and transformed and changed. And the Holy Spirit is with you, just like the video, while it was humorous, John 16, 7 and 8, Jesus is telling them, he said, it's a, he's about to, to leave them. He's going to be crucified and go to heaven and, and rise again and go back to heaven. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, Jesus says, for if I don't go away, the helper will not come to you. 
Who's the helper? The advocate, the Holy Spirit, the counselor, some versions say. He will convict, and I, but if I depart, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you. And when he's come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to let us know when we're doing wrong. And to, it's not just to let us know, but for a reason to get us to get closer to God, to be sensitive, to walk with him, to hear him, not only to correct or convict or to warn, but to guide and to lead. Every one of you have a calling of God that you can only do by the power of the Spirit. Because if you could do it without God's help, then you get the credit because you're so good. God's gonna ask you to do something you can't do on your own, but he's got a spirit and a power that can do it through you. Are you with me? And when you don't do it, someone misses out because you're the one that was supposed to do it. Don't just assume someone else jumped in, no. The Bible says, how will they hear if they're without a preacher, right? In other words, the implication is, you don't witness to a certain people, they won't hear and they won't ever go to heaven because you were God's sent one and his spirit was upon you. You were meant to talk to that person. Wow. Not to make you feel guilty, but that's why it's so important we get a hold of the spirit of God so we can be led and we can be used of God. And he wants to be close, he wants to draw us near. That's why he convicts us of sin, so we get close to God. But conviction hurts a lot of times. It's like being in a dark room and you walk into a great, great bright light and, you know, stark difference. And so your eyes are like messed up. In Romans, if you turn there, and this is a couple of times we're going to be in Romans. And I'm going to read some rather uh, uh, lengthy passages here. Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may abound? He just got through talking about the God's grace. He also just got to talking about the victories in Jesus Christ. There's a war, but victory has been won. Jesus did it. And, uh, you know, if you thought about this statement, shall we go on sinning that grace may increase by no means? Why would he ask the question, should we go on sinning if we were just these weakling people that are just going to wallow around our sin and just go, yeah, you sin, I sin, we all sin. But... Universal salvation, no worries. We're all going to heaven. Now, I'm not preaching saved by works. I'm preaching that God's grace is powerful to deliver you, to save you from your sin. And I'm not going to address the whole idea of sinless perfection. God, God is God. We know he's sinless perfect. But I am going to address that a lot of you wallow around with the excuse of well, we're all human and you just excuse and you walk as close to self and doing what you want with the excuse of, well, everyone else is not perfect. Oh, well. No, God can deliver you anything. God can set you free. God has the power to give you victory to be overcomers in Jesus Christ. And there's victory for you. And so he says, he asks the question, shall we go on sinning them grace about? Well, no, by no means. So... We died to sin. How can we live any longer? Or don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were, in other words, the Holy Spirit came in to live in us, and we have a different spirit now, God's spirit, and the human sinful spirit died. You died to yourself. Now you've got something living in you that's powerful. That's the spirit of God. He will guide you into all truth. He will be with you. He will give you the power. And it says, so verse four again, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away. Done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Are you a slave to sin? You don't have to be. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Verse 12, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. You see that? 
Do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires and don't offer your parts of your body to sin. In other words, guys, grace is not a coverall and a definition that says, oh, I'm saved by grace. I believe in God. I'm going to heaven. No, grace is power to help you overcome. Let me ask you a question. If that's not true, why would Jesus tell this little story when he says this? He says, uh, he says, if you, if you obey me, you love me. And then he says, he that keeps these sayings of mine is like the, 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 the wise man that built his house upon the rock. And when the winds and storms came, he stood. In other words, he's saying he who listens and obeys is like that. But he says, the one that hears these sayings, it says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You're following, and the, the word keep is not perfect, sinless, perfect, it's, it's following. It's the word that, that they use as a sailor, keeping the stars. In other words, they set their course by the star. In other words, your desire is to set your courts according to God's holy standard and have the spirit of God to guide you so that you can follow after him. And he says, but if you hear these sayings and you don't follow them, you're like the foolish man that built his house on the sand, the storms came, the winds blow, the rain, and your house fell down. Why would he say that? Why would he also say, connected to what you do in obedience, because faith actually means, if you go study it out, saved by grace through faith, it's trust and obey, not belief. And so why would he also tell us that some will be like the guy It says, but Lord, when he says, I, depart from me, I never knew you. He said, but Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I did wonderful works in your name. And maybe they did because there's power in the name of Jesus, but that doesn't mean anything, right? He said, but I never knew you. In other words, like Mark Lineback says to our fifth grade class, 15 minutes a day, open the Bible, read it, and pray. That's relationship, and it will grow from there so that before long you can go an hour with God and just meditate. And it's like you're sitting right on the lap of the Father. The Holy Spirit is there. He's revealing things to you. There's a quickening. You see, we want to go after God, not go, just go against sin. When you go after God, you get enough of his power and his spirit and his word and his strength that you don't even have to struggle with sin. It just falls off of you. You just get victorious. Amen? Are you with me here? All right, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to encourage you. And then in Romans 8, starting in verse 5, I'll just read this and I'm about done. I got a little more to say, but I'm about done. You sound like you've been in one of my sermons before. Verse 5, those who live according to sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires. Where's your mind? What do you think about all week long, day long? But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. What does God's Spirit want to do through you? What does He want to do in holiness in your life and witness? The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ living in you, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. So we have an obligation, brothers, verse 12, but it's not to the sinful nature to live after it, but... For it, so it says, for if you live according to sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Are you a son of God? And it goes on there, and it says that God's Spirit, he puts his Spirit in you, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And that's what I'm wanting for you, to know the Father so well that when you say, Father, it's not because of the Lord's prayer, our Father in heaven, but because you've made him your Father in such a special, intimate, close way that you know God, you know his voice, and you walk with him. Are you with me? 
We need the Holy Spirit work in our life, folks. And the next thing it does, it gives us power to be witnesses, Acts 1.8. You'll see power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you. You'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the othermost ends of the world. And being a witness means several things. It's, number one, the kind of person you are. Your voice is worthless unless your fruit matches. Are you with me? And that's why you get full of God full of God's spirit, get close to God. The fruit will be natural from a tree that is a tree of faith, a tree that's pursuing God, a tree of the spirit. That fruit will fall from you. And the second thing is that we also have giftings and callings. You hear, you listen to me? And the Holy Spirit wants to work through you. And when he does, it's a witness of the demonstration and power of the spirit of God that all would know that he truly is God. Are you with me? On the day of Pentecost, they paid attention, didn't they? And then Peter preached and told the truth, talked about the gospel, and many got saved. See, when God shows up in miraculous ways, when God flows through you in special ways, there's always a reason and an opportunity to share Jesus with people around you, with your family, your neighbors, and your friends. That's being a witness with the power of God's demonstration working through you and your gifts and callings, and he needs you to be a part of that body. And also, the last thing is, of course, the gospel is to be a witness, you gotta share the gospel. How will they know if they do not hear? How will they hear unless you have someone speak and teach, preach, tell them, go and tell them. And guys, there is no such thing as a silent witness because you stand there with fruit all over your tree. Now sometimes God's spirit may lead you to be silent and somebody will come to you, but then you have to tell them. You have to show them that it's Jesus is the answer. You have to show them to put their faith in Jesus. You have to show them the power of grace. You have to show them and bring them and pray with them that Jesus might come in. Are you with me? So guys, listen, I don't want to just have church and have bless me club and have a lot of Holy Spirit stuff just make us feel good and go tingle, tingle, tingle. No, when you hit the ground, you walk straight. You hit the ground, you went running. And what's the purpose? To bring Jesus to the world. Amen? Because he's the last thing he said is go into the world. The last thing is the Holy Spirit gives us guidance in John 16, 13. However, when he, remember he said, calls him he all over. He's the third person of the Godhead. There's one God and three persons, the Holy Spirit. And he, he is known. He is known as God. And when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. In other words, he'll work miraculous through you. He'll speak to you, and you'll know things you otherwise would not know. He'll lead you and do things that you otherwise wouldn't do, but you'd have the boldness to do it. And when he takes you, read this word, he opens up truth. Otherwise, you become dead theologians. You miss you miss. Uh, you misdiagnose uh, the Bible, misinterpret the Bible, and you become like these liberal uh, uh, churches and liberal theologians and liberal pastors that explain the power and the presence and fullness of God away. Let me tell you something. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is powerful enough that we can rise up and be transformed, be victorious. You don't have to be under bondage. You can pull down the strongholds of the enemy, and you can be free today in the name of Jesus. Will you bow your head with me? Would you close your eyes, the privacy of your neighbor, and let me ask you a question. Are you ready to go deeper? Are you ready for God to take you places you've never been? Are you ready to listen to the voice of the Spirit? If you're here and you've never, you're not sure that you would go to heaven if you were to die and you're here. The Holy Spirit's here and he's calling and saying, Jesus will forgive you, he'll come in and he'll power you. He'll be your comforter, he'll be your helper, he'll be your guide, he'll be your teacher. He'll give you a reason to live when they feel like there is no reason to live. Oh, God, just pray the Holy Spirit would do a work in you because I can't do and nobody can. And that is a work of transformation. If you're here and you say, I need Jesus to transform my heart and change my heart and make me desire God, give me a desire and give me power to live for Jesus. I'm gonna come to him saying, come into me, Jesus. Come in by your spirit. And you're here, we say, you lift your hand. I thank you for all just closing your eyes and respecting your neighbor. Anybody here? Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Jesus' name. May anyone else, anybody else, come on. The Holy Spirit, don't just be religious. Yes, in the name of Jesus, may he power you and change you. Yes, when I was about your age, that happened to me. Thank you so much. And then let me ask this. How many of you need more Jesus? You want more of the power of his spirit. You want more victory. You want to see God work through you and his giftings and power on miraculous ways to be used as a witness and to bless others and that God bring healings and, and giftings and encouragements and callings through you as the Spirit of God works mightily 